It's over. The merge is done. No more GPU mining of Ethereum. Gamers should rejoice as GPUs are set free from the doldrums of GPU mining. What can we expect for the next generation of GPUs, and should you look to buy a used GPU instead? Let's get into it. The merge of Ethereum from proof of work using GPUs to proof of stake is complete, and it occurred at 6.43 UTC or 2.43 AM Eastern Standard Time on September 15th. That means GPUs can no longer be used to mine Ethereum. I wasn't sure this day was going to come. I made a series of videos last year trying to understand why I couldn't buy a GPU at MSRP, and the mainstream press provided nonsensical answers. They just said the high price was due to inflation, shortages, COVID, and other factors. Well, the price of GPUs has been declining all this year. How do you explain that due to inflation? The reason was due to miners, and more specifically, casual miners. As I predicted last year, as the hash power continued to increase, the difficulty would rise, and that would decrease mining profits. Subsequently, miners stopped buying GPUs this year, and the prices began to tumble. You see, at the peak of the mining boom, an RTX 3090 could earn up to $18 a day, and even a year ago when I did those videos, it would earn $9.50 a day. And just before the merge, Tom's Hardware recorded that same 3090 would earn just under $3 a day. Well, after the merge, it's just 65 cents a day. As I said in the video back then, all that GPU hash power could not be supported by the other crypto coins and still be profitable. Case in point, the hash rate of two other popular coins, Ethereum Classic and Ravencoin, doubled in the hours after the merge. That resulted in a block of Ethereum Classic going from earning 70 cents to just 11 cents, and a block of Ravencoin from $1.77 to just 5 cents. Without profitability on other coins, GPU mining is dead. Be prepared for the incoming flood of GPUs into the market. But don't expect this to be a singular event. This will not just occur over a week or two. This will take months to unwind. 3dcenter.org put together a nice table and chart that shows how the sales quantity peaked at over 13 million units per quarter. Of that 13, we see AMD producing about 3 million and Nvidia producing about 10. This is well above the levels previously needed to supply gamers. All those GPUs that were mining on the farms will now be available on the second hand market as used GPUs. It could take well over six months and up to a year for the community to absorb all those GPUs. Think about it. There were millions of GPUs that were overproduced and used just for mining. And now they will be looking for gamers to buy them up. Well, there will not be enough gamers to absorb this huge oversupply on the secondhand market. The last GPU boom from mid-2017 into the spring of 2018 was less than a year. Yet the supply of GPUs from mining was still available into early 2019. I remember it was easy to get an RX 580 for under $100 in early 2019. And not only will last gen cards get cheap, but two and three generation old cards will get dirt cheap. Anyone looking to build an inexpensive system will have a lot to choose from. Should you buy one of these used GPUs? You hear all kinds of advice from, sure, they're fine, they're built to last a long time, to, don't buy it, it will give you nothing but trouble, it's not worth it. And I can tell you from personal experience that both statements are true. When the last GPU mining bubble burst in 2018, I bought dozens of used GPUs, and most of them are still working fine today. However, I did get several cards that started to artifact several months later. Others had a fan go out on them. For some, it was three months and others, it was more than six months. And by that time, those cards were out of warranty and could not be RMA'd. It really is unpredictable what you will get. These GPUs don't have an odometer like a car that can tell you how many miles are on them. You need to ask a lot of questions from the buyer to minimize your chances of getting a worn out GPU. My advice is that if you're not comfortable in taking apart a GPU to repaste the die and put on new thermal pads or adventurous enough to learn, then this may not be for you. However, if you are willing to take the risk and learn, these next six months are going to be offering up some amazing deals since many of these GPU miners will have already made their money and will part with their cards for with whatever they can get. It's going to be fun, and I for one am looking forward to the upcoming deals. What about the next generation of GPUs in the RTX 4000 series or the Radiant RX 7000 series? 
Both AMD and Nvidia will draw out the release of this generation of cards so that the market can slowly absorb the flood of used cards. They will start at the high end with the 80 and 90 series, since those will offer new levels of performance you can't get on the secondhand market, and some people will pay whatever for new levels of performance. The performance of the next generation 60 series and 70 series will bump into the current gen 80 and 90 series. I mean, as long as you can get a used high-end GPU for less than what a new mid-range GPU sells for, then why would you ever buy the new card? For example, if they released the 4070 into a used market that is flooded with 3090s, then sales of the 4070 would be very slow since many would turn to the used market to get a deal on the 3090. The same would also be true if Nvidia released a 4060 into a market flooded with used 3070s and 3080s. So they will wait until after the peak of the flood before they release the newer 60 and 70 series cards. In terms of timing, I would expect the 70 series to be released in the first part of next year and the 60 series mid-year or later. I don't think we'll see a 50 series card released anytime soon, if at all, this generation. In fact, I would not recommend anyone to buy a 3050 or 6500 XT. Those cards are dead. You will be able to get so much better performance for the money buying a used card. And AMD will follow Nvidia's lead in slowly releasing new GPUs this upcoming generation. By the way, if you like videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below if you are looking to buy a new GPU this year when they launch. I think what the next generation of GPUs will be known for is more performance, more power, more heat. We have the leaked specs of the RTX 4000 series that haven't changed much since last April, and now we have additional information like clock speeds. And from that I can say, the performance increase for the 4090 is going to be massive. It is going to be head and shoulders above anything else on the market when it is released. It will truly be a higher tier of performance. And that is exciting. It seems Nvidia has thrown everything they have at this to keep the GPU crown this generation. I mean, 450 watts with a secondary bias that could use 650 watts? Couple that with CPUs that will use 200 watts? I have electric room heaters that consume less power. I made fun of this GPU for offering small performance gains over the 3080 for more than double the price. Well, the 4090 is going to be worthy of being called the BF GPU and will offer unprecedented levels of gaming. But it will offer those highest levels of performance with the highest levels of power consumption. Normally, I don't care about power levels in a desktop, but I do have my limits. I have an overclocked i9-9900K with a Vega 64 GPU that will pull 500 watts from the wall when under load. And after an hour, my 3x4 meter room gets uncomfortably warm. It's something you'll need to think about if room temperatures are important to you. Now some people are predicting a huge increase in price for the 4090. I'm not sure they can do this in a market that is in a recession. The 1999 price of the 3090 Ti didn't work out too well. Look for NVIDIA to make the same play as last generation where they throw the AIBs under the bus. I suspect they will offer a Founders Edition for $14.99, however, those will quickly sell out and be very limited in availability. The AIBs will then come in and offer GPUs from $17.99 to $2,000 or whatever the market will bear. As for the 80 series, that is more complicated based on the leaks. The 12 GB version is really a disguised 70 series using the AD104 die and could be offered for $699 for a Founders Edition and AIBs will charge up to $800. The 16 GB version is the real 80 series card and will be more expensive. How much more? If we look at the data and the disturbing price trends I showed last spring, the 80 series trended to an $800 price point. That could be a Founders Edition that is priced from $799 to $899, but it will be scarce and sold out everywhere. Then I expect the AIBs to sell that 16GB version in the range from $899 to $999, and that will leave room for a future 4080 Ti at the $1200 price point. Comment below on what you think NVIDIA will charge for the 4080 and 4090 GPUs. How will AMD compete with the RX 7000 series against NVIDIA? We'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.